Hello and welcome to the Grace video presentation of angiogenesis and the role of Avastin or Bevacizumab in first-line therapy for advanced non-small cell lung cancer. My name is Dr. Jack West and I'm a medical oncologist and the medical director of the Thoracic Oncology Program at Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, Washington. I also serve as the president and CEO of GRACE, the global resource for advancing cancer education. This video presentation is sponsored by GRACE member Dr. Neil Birch, who is now without progression on chemo and Avastin for 18 cycles and counting. A couple of disclaimers before we get started. The information provided here includes my own views, and they are not necessarily those of the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education or those of Swedish Cancer Institute. The contents of this program do not constitute medical advice, and they are intended to supplement but not replace input from an individual patient's medical team. Angiogenesis is one of the key critical components that allows a tumor to grow and spread. As shown in the progression from left to right on this slide, a small cancer can only grow to a few millimeters in size before it outstrips its blood supply and can no longer passively receive sufficient nutrition or adequately dispose of waste to its microenvironment. At that point, it needs to develop a blood supply to help with these processes before it can grow. Tumors secrete proteins to promote this development of new blood vessels, a process called angiogenesis. The most dominant of these is called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF. Avastin is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the ability of VEGF to activate receptors on the lining of nearby blood vessels, called endothelium. This blocks the angiogenic process. A very important trial of Avastin in advanced non-small cell lung cancer came out of Vanderbilt University, where they randomized about 100 previously untreated patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer of any histologic subtype to receive first-line chemo with carbo and taxol or the same chemo with the Vastin at either a higher or lower dose. In this trial, patients on the higher dose had a much better survival than was seen in the lower dose, and this led to the higher dose being adopted for further research in the U.S. This trial also led to the issue of the squamous subtype of non-small cell lung cancer being associated with a high risk of life-threatening or fatal bleeding complications, specifically coughing up blood, known medically as hemoptysis. The subsequently larger randomized phase 3 study, known as ECOG-4599, more precisely assessed whether Avast and improved overall survival for patients with previously untreated advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Patients were randomized to receive up to six cycles of carbo and taxol alone or with Avastin at the higher dose. And if patients had not progressed after that point, those assigned to the Avastin-containing arm would continue on Avastin alone as so-called maintenance therapy until progression. Importantly, based on the preceding trial, patients with the squamous cell subtype of non-small cell lung cancer were excluded, as were patients with a history of hemoptysis, brain metastases, those on full doses of blood thinners, or with active cardiovascular disease. This was due to a concern about the potential danger of serious complications in these patients. After several years of large trials of standard chemo with targeted therapies that failed to show a benefit for patients, this trial was a positive one and was presented by Dr. Alan Sandler at the plenary session of ASCO in 2005, and it was subsequently published in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. This was because it broke the negative pattern and established what many felt was a new standard of care. The combination of carbo and taxol with Avastin was associated with a more than doubling of the response rate, a 34% improvement in progression-free survival, and a full two-month improvement in the median overall survival, compared with the same chemotherapy alone. Importantly, however, Avastin was associated with some increased risk compared with chemo alone, with 15 versus 2 treatment-related deaths seen in the two arms. Some of these were from bleeding complications, which were less frequent with the more careful patient selection in this trial, but they still occurred rarely. Another source of treatment-related deaths was from the apparently higher risk of low blood counts and infections when Avastin was added to carbo and taxol. Still, even taking these challenges into account, there was a two-month median overall survival benefit with the three-drug combination. A subsequent subset analysis showed that the side effects and treatment-related deaths were disproportionately seen in the subgroup of patients who were over 70, and those accounted for 24% in the trial population. Perhaps largely because of that, elderly patients did not experience a significant improvement in survival, despite the fact that they had a markedly higher response rate when Avastin was added to chemotherapy. 
A similar trial of chemotherapy in Avastin was subsequently conducted in Europe. In the so-called AVAIL trial for Avastin and lung cancer, there were a few key differences compared with the U.S.-based trial. The chemotherapy backbone was cisplatin and gemcitabine, a regimen commonly used in Europe. In addition, the group not assigned to Avastin received a placebo with their chemo instead of just chemotherapy alone. The AVAIL trial also compared the results of chemo with either the lower or the higher dose of Avastin. The trial enrolled a very similar population to the U.S. study in terms of the eligibility restrictions, and the trial also gave maintenance therapy to patients who hadn't progressed after six cycles of first-line chemotherapy with Avastin. Unlike the U.S.-based ECOG study that had a primary endpoint of overall survival, the AVAIL trial focused on progression-free survival, or PFS, as its primary endpoint. Both Avastin-containing arms showed a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival compared to chemo alone, and there was no suggestion that the higher dose was superior. If anything, the lower dose actually looked perhaps a little better. However, very recent results of overall survival on the AVAIL trial showed that it was essentially the same, a median of a little more than 13 months, in all three groups. We don't yet have a clear explanation of why these results are different from those in the ECOG trial, except to say that the benefit of Avastin may be specific to the chemo regimen it's given with. Importantly, there were no real surprises in terms of side effects, which were actually quite comparable in most measures between the lower and higher dose of Avastin with cisplatin and gemcitabine. In summary, angiogenesis appears to be an important process in advanced non-small cell lung cancer. It's critical to note that the patients included in these trials with Avastin represented a limited subset of the overall patient population, and I would estimate that to be about 40% of the general patient population with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. However, additional research suggests that patients with treated brain metastases and potentially those on blood thinners may receive Avastin safely, so the eligibility issues are somewhat of a work in progress. The first large trial of chemo in Avastin, ECOG 4599, came out of the U.S., used carbointaxol as the chemo backbone, and showed a significant improvement in overall survival and other efficacy parameters, though with some increased risk of potentially serious or even fatal side effects. These appeared to be more pronounced in older patients. A second trial known as AVAIL was conducted in Europe and hasn't been published in final form, but it showed a modest and statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival with either a lower or higher dose of Avastin added to cisplatin and gemcitabine. However, there was no improvement in overall survival with Avastin in this trial. Still, Avastin is commonly used for eligible patients in the U.S. based on the American trial results. There remain several key open questions such as why these two large trials produced different overall survival results. It's also unclear what the true optimal dose of Avastin should be. We also don't know the added value of the maintenance portion of single-agent Avastin after it's given with chemotherapy for six cycles. You can find additional details on several of these topics within the subject archives at the web address www.cancergrace.org. Members of GRACE can also leave comments and questions about this presentation at the web address in the middle of the slide. Thank you very much for your interest. A transcript as well as a PDF file with copies of figures associated with this program are available at www.cancergrace.org forward slash gracecasts.